Hello friends, welcome to Endo Tales from Life. In this episode, we are going to see a full procedure video of an endo done in single visit through the crown in a mandibular lateral incisor with periapical lesion and an intraoral swelling. And the patient was referred to me with this radiograph and I was requested to do endo in the tooth number 32. And I generally personally do not prefer uh, pre, uh, my OPG as a pre-op radiograph. So I repeated my intraoral periapical radiograph and this is my pre-op and I have decided to do the endo through the crown as recommended by the referring dentist and also seeing uh, sufficient of uh, satisfactory functioning processes that is existing. And these are the details that I could infer from my pre-op radiograph. I could see a pretty wide and continuous patent canal so the chances of extra canals are almost ruled out from this pre-op radiograph and I also see a pretty big periapical lesion and just like how I showed in my previous video here as well we are going to drill through the metal ceramic processes for which I will use my coarse diamond to drill through the ceramic part following which I'll use my metal cutting bar and this particular brand is my favorite metal cutting bar which is Trihawk. And the entire procedure is done under magnification and under rubber dam isolation and I'm beginning with the coarse diamond on the lingual aspect of the tooth number 32. And as I'm beginning to drill can see my assistant clearing my mirror now and then by blowing air so that my vision is not impaired and doing an access through the crown can be tricky because we do not have anatomical guidance like how we have in a healthy tooth I mean in a natural tooth like we have the single limb which are landmarks for us to enter into the pulp chamber safely but here we do not have such guidelines so I will not be very conservative when I am creating an initial window so you can see I am clearing the ceramic part pretty wide so that I can avoid hydrogenic errors Once I have done a sufficient window with my diamond burr and exposed the metal part, now I use my trihawk burr. I mentioned it's my favorite burr, you will understand why because it's very quick to cut through the metal and you can see in less than a second or two. I've gone through the metal and now I'm just widening the window further. In this case, to my surprise, even before I completed my access or even instrumented the canal I was able to see a lot of pus coming out of the axis you can see that so much of pus coming out of the axis cavity even before instrumenting it And I'm just clearing the debris which I often prefer to do with a scaler with water and then checking for straight lane access with my DG16 could see that I need to do some more deroofing which I'll proceed to do with my traditional diamond burr you can see the metal cutting burr was just used to drill through the metal and once I'm done with that 
I again change to the normal burr, establish proper straight line axis, will not be too conservative when I am doing an endo through the crown like I mentioned earlier. Now I'm using my orifice, orifice shaper. To open up the coronal and middle third of the root canal. And the volume of the pus that was being discharged through the canal you can see is getting reduced slowly as we go through the instrumentation process. And then for debriding the coronal and middle third of the canal I use continuous ultrasonic irrigation with U-files which we already discussed in one of the tales earlier. Following this, we'll be proceeding with rotary instrumentation of the apical third of the canal. You can see the amount of debris that has been accumulated in the flutes of my orifice shaper where its action is maximum. And during rotary instrumentation, I do not use K-files, manual K-files for negotiation or glide path. We directly go with rotary. And with the endo motor that has an integrated apex locator function, as you can see in this picture, the moment my endo motor with the integrated apex locator shows I reach the apex, I stop and proceed with my irrigation. And for the mainstream of irrigation, I prefer to use the 30 gauge irrigation needle. And a lot of irrigant activation or agitation with sonics and again my favorite is the air sonics here. And now I'm deciding to do a single visit endo as you can see the pus discharge is slowly stopped and here I take my master cone radiograph and you can see I don't have to even disturb my rubber dam assembly and once I take my master cone radiograph you can see the GP is little short of my radiographic apex but I will not bother to increase because well if you should notice this we are all obsessed with getting your GP to the radiographic apex but that is not exactly our biologic working length so my biologic working length of my terminus of my root canal preparation and obturation should be where exactly the pulp tissue ends which almost coincides with the apical constriction and my radiographic apex is this red mark. You can see the difference. So I always trust my apex locator and I will stop my preparation and obturation to where my apex locator indicates as you can see in this particular case. I stop my preparation to this place and then go ahead with my final irrigation. You can see I'm increasing the length of irrigation time and contact time of my irrigant with the root dentin and agitation which is very important for a good disinfection of the root canal and in the meantime you can also see the canal is dry and ready for obturation. So this is my canal drying protocol. I first aspirate the canal with the needle then I use my paper point. Usually it's just a single paper point but this case being a draining canal so I'm using my second paper point as well. You can see the first paper point was wet but the second paper point is dry. So my indication or my, how I decide upon single visit endo is if I can dry the canal, I fill the canal in single visit and I go ahead with my favorite sealer, favorite bioceramic sealer. And the hydraulic single cone technique with bio GP. I just use my obturation pen to shear the GP 
at the orifice level and remove the excess GP that's present in the pulp chamber and use a separate condenser this is very important you are not supposed to apply pressure with the tip of your obturation pin or the down pack unit you need to have separate condensers and once I am done since these are bioceramic sealants they can tolerate moisture and we just run a quick scaler wash to clean the pulp chamber with the excess sealant and I further use my plugger to condense the GP make sure there is adequate space for the coronal seal which I will do by applying adhesives the universal adhesive is applied and excess is air dried light activate my adhesive and I use a bulk fill flowable to fill the entire access cavity In light activate and that's it we are done so I'm going to remove the rubber dam finally you can see I have not used any clamps I've done the split dam technique since there's a bridge that is in place move the rubber dam assembly and that's it we are done so on the left is my pre-op radiograph on the right is my post-op radiograph and that's it and I will be sharing the follow-up radiographs of these of this case in my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and in my next video we will be coming up with more a detailed explanation about the working length technique that we have employed in this particular case and uh, the modern ways of working length determination with the modern integrated endomotor apex locator thank you see you soon